If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video before moving on. In order to get this problem started, we're going to use Pascal's principle as it applies to this so-called hydraulic lift. So let's go ahead and write down the formula for Pascal's principle. F1 is going to refer to the force that's being exerted upward over here at piston 1. A1 would be the area of piston 1. If we look carefully, I kind of obscured it here with the arrow, but if we look carefully, the area of piston 1 would be the area of a circle. And so ultimately we're going to fill in pi r squared for that. So we'll put that force F1 back into the diagram. F2 would be the 500 pound weight that's pressing downward on piston 2. So we have a downward acting force that we can label F2, which is equal to 500 pounds. And again, the area A2 is the area of a circle, in this case the uh, circular area of piston 2. We can actually go ahead and solve for F1 by multiplying both sides by A1. We can then replace the areas with pi r squareds. The pi's here will cancel. And then we would be ready to go ahead and plug in our known values. We know F2 again is 500 pounds. The radii of each piston is, are also given. We just have to note they were given in the form of a diameter. So you got to make sure that you divide each diameter by 2 in order to get the radii. And when we calculate F1 we get roughly 13.9 newtons. So we can label that 13.9 newtons over here on the diagram. The next part of solving this problem is to take a look at this rod right here and to kind of draw a separate picture for it. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the rod with the two forces acting on it relabeled along with the distances that those forces are acting from the left end of the rod. If we choose a pivot on the very far left end of the rod, we're going to be able to take advantage of the principle that the sum of the torques acting on the rod is equal to zero. Now why would that be? It's because the rod is not rotating. It's not spinning this way, it's not spinning that way, and as a result the sum of the torques is equal to zero. We need to remind ourselves also that torque is equal to a force times a distance times the sine of an angle. In this case the angle for both forces will be 90 degrees because those forces are acting perpendicular to this rod. So let's fill into this equation right here the torque exerted by force 1 and the torque exerted by the unknown force. Note that the torque exerted by the unknown force is negative. The reason is because that force is tending to try to rotate the bar in a clockwise fashion about this pivot point. And any time a force is tending to rotate an object clockwise, the torque exerted by that force is indeed negative. F1 is tending to rotate the bar in an anti-clockwise fashion, so its torque will be positive. Also note that the distance from force F, the unknown force, to the pivot point is indeed 12 inches. It's not 10 inches. We have to make sure we measure all the way from that force to the pivot point, which is a total of 10 plus 2 equals 12 inches. So with those ideas in mind, and with the fact that sine of 90 is 1, so those essential, essentially can cancel, we can quite easily solve for the unknown force. And when we do that, we get the value of 2.3 pounds. The reason the force comes out in pounds is because the given forces were also in pounds. In fact, when we labeled this 13.9 newtons, that was a small mistake. That should have been also in pounds, but that certainly did not affect the rest of the calculation.